Yo, so guys, Sam here, and today I've got something really, really exciting. It's this. This is the Canon C70. I just picked this up from Canon Malaysia. It's honestly so, just, just crazy to think about it that I actually own this camera. I've been working really, really hard. I've been saving a lot of money for a new camera, and you know, the C70 just came at the right time, and it kind of fit the needs that I, I, I need it for. Uh, and so today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing as well as talking about why I chose the C70 specifically as well as a little bit of a discussion as to why I think some people might want to choose a cinema camera or at least a video first or a video focused camera. So let's not waste any more time and let's go into the unboxing. Let's, let's just open it up and we have obviously our whatever manuals this is. I'm not going to read it. Just I don't even know why they have it. They should just have everything online. Um, first thing, strap. Don't need, don't really use it. But it's a nice beefy strap. Uh, well, might use it. Uh, also, yes, I forgot to mention one thing. I also did have the uh, Canon, I also bought a Canon BPA60 battery. And I'll tell you the reason why I chose this. I also bought the 0.71 adapter, but unfortunately it didn't come today. It took a bit of a while. So I'm not so sure when it's coming, but when it happens, I'll be sharing about it. Yeah, uh, so actually let's just open up this battery first. So the reason why I chose this battery is uh, I actually want to power this camera off of V-mount in the future. This camera comes with in the box uh, the BPA30 which from my testings when I first shot with it, uh, it lasted for about 3 hours or less than that. Uh, so I wasn't a huge fan of that and I wanted something that could last a little bit longer while retaining like a small footprint. Uh, the BPS 60 is massive. I'll show you a uh, I'll show you uh, like a comparison later, but it's huge and it should give me way more power. Yeah. So next we have obviously the charger. Uh, this top handle. Uh, the top handle was actually something that I was surprised. Uh, I had read a lot of reviews and read, uh, seen a lot of videos talking about how this is actually a very bad top handle. It's not really useful, um, but I actually kind of like it. It's solid, it's it's full grip. The only thing that I don't like is that it only has one uh, cold shoe or is this a hot shoe? No, this is, I don't think it's a hot shoe. This is a cold shoe. I wish they would have one or two more, but it's nice to have cable management inside. Uh, I The also other thing that I like, uh, I shot with the C200 for quite a while. I didn't own that, but I shot with it for quite a lot of projects. And the thing is, is about the top handle for that is you needed tools to take it out. Uh, I actually like that this just has a screw on it and you can quickly screw it and unscrew uh, just to check it out. Uh, will I be using this top handle? Maybe, but I actually have some stuff coming in from Condor Blue. I hope that will come in time, uh, but then I'll probably be switching over to that. But this is a nice top handle for when you want to strip down the rig as minimal weight as possible. Yeah, we have these um, screws for the uh, microphone mount, if I'm not mistaken. Um, first, next, the battery. This is the BPA30 batteries. Uh, as you can see, the BPA60, way more, more than half the size, I think, half the size. Uh, it should give me significantly more time. And the reason why I think for these, these two batteries are enough is on bigger production shoots, I do want to use a V-mount to power this entire camera. Uh, and that's why for me, these are more for run and gun situations where I want to have like a smaller rig on me. I want to maybe put it on a gimbal perhaps. Uh, and that's where these batteries come in. I'll probably be using the BPA30s for gimbal work because it's just smaller. And for any handheld work or tripod work, I'll use the BPA60. And on bigger and longer shoots, I'll probably be using a V-mount uh, instead. Yeah, uh, next is the power brick, the power brick adapter, which you can actually use to power the camera. I do not like that this is fixed in because if this breaks, I will need to replace the whole thing, which is a really terrible design in my opinion. Uh, this should be able to be detached. And the thing is, I, this powers as the DC cable and as, as well as you put this onto the charger as well. But once again, this is, I don't know why companies still use this. Uh, I just wish that they would like keep it separate and you can unplug it in and out. Lastly, of course, we have the microphone holder, which is a pretty solid uh, microphone shock mount. Uh, it's nice. I probably won't be using it that much because I don't really use that much shotguns and shotgun like long microphones on this. I probably use like an onboard like a 35, 3.5 uh, mil jack because that just makes it easier. 
uh, and also this camera the the c70 only has like mini xlrs which i would need to buy an adapter which i'm not a huge fan of uh, but we'll see what happens and of course the final piece of the puzzle bam the canon c70 oh my god Mmm, even has that new camera smell. If you guys, you know, unbox new cameras, you would know exactly what the smell is. Uh, the One DX3, they didn't have that new smell, I'm surprised, but this one has, which I'm really, 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 really fond of. And the first thing I want to change is, I don't, I don't like this camera cover. I'm going to change it to the, to this. This is the Condor Blue RF Cine Cap. I, I love it because it's so beautiful. Uh, and I'm just going to place it on top. And there we go. C70 right in my hands. Uh, I really love it. The only thing I don't really like uh, is this screen that's a little bit flimsy, but I will be doing a first impressions on this camera soon. Uh, I want to shoot with it a couple more days and test out a few things. So now I want to talk about a few reasons why I chose this camera. And the first thing I want to knock out is image quality. Yes, this camera does produce amazing images, but for the kind of work that I do, image quality isn't the isn't super important when choosing a new camera. In my opinion, the 1DX3 that I'm shooting with right now gives amazing images and the kind of work that I do is really a lot of run and gun, uh, weddings, corporate turnaround videos that don't really necessarily need that high-end commercial look. So in terms of image quality, I didn't really buy this camera for that. Uh, but I did buy it for everything else and the going back to the reasons as the kind of work that I do is a lot of one man person run and gun really quick turnaround videos and having a lot of the functions that I'm going to talk about later inside one camera really is a lifesaver and or in my opinion a time saver when it comes to uh, really really tight crunch situations or tight tight crunch uh, shoots now the biggest problem I had with the 1DX Mark III really was number one uh, a screen, a flip screen. Uh, it's not really an inherent problem with the camera, it's just that at times I did wish I had a screen because all the time I shoot with the monitor, but sometimes when I want to have my camera package a little bit smaller, it's hard to not have a monitor with the 1DX because it's a flip, uh, it's a fixed screen. Uh, so I have found some issues with that sometimes and so it's always nice to just have like a flip screen here. But the biggest reason as to why I chose this camera, it really is the built-in ND filters. When I shot with this for the first time, it it really, really sped up my workflow. You might be thinking, okay, yeah, you can just keep screwing on and off or you can buy multiple filters. Uh, but if I'm going to buy multiple filters, I'm going to be buying good quality filters. And these could run up to like, let's say like 1,000, 1,005 ringgit. And if I buy one for almost every lens that I use, which I'm constantly switching in and out, uh, they can add up to a lot of money. And the one thing I've always had is that just having that few seconds or a minute to switch uh, switch ND filters it was honestly quite a hassle and some of you might oh a few seconds on set isn't going to change a lot of time but you'd be surprised and a lot of times when you're, you're just trying to move fast or when you're trying to just do a lot of things at the same time you're trying to re uh, you're trying to rush you're trying to rush for time you will eventually make mistakes and what happens is sometimes I accidentally touch the glass of my ND filter and I would have to wipe it up uh, because once again, I work alone. I don't have a camera assistant with me. And so just having an ND filter built in, meaning that I don't have to worry about changing lenses. And sometimes I use 82 mil filter threads on my ND filters and I would need to take out like different, different step up rooms to fit the multiple lenses that I use. And so just having everything in the camera behind the lens just makes everything so much easier. And that really was one of the main reasons as to why I bought this. So the next reason why I bought this camera is really the RF mount itself. I think whilst you know all EF cameras are fantastic and EF glasses are amazing, uh, the bodies itself really is the limit, the main limiting factor uh, moving forward in the future. I did consider the C300 Mark III over this camera. However, you know, it's an EF mount and the, the numerous problems that come with it. Number one is the adaptability of different lenses. I have started to transition to work with vintage lenses for specific looks and adapting vintage lenses onto EF mount is actually very difficult there are not many like fd to ef adapters i don't think you can physically do that yes you can mod your uh, fd lenses but i should film as well so i don't want to mod my fd lenses to only shoot uh, ef mount 
and that's where the RF mount does come in you know it just gives you so much room and I, could, I was able to shoot with the my personal favorite lens the Canon 50mm 1.4 LTM it's an amazingly sharp lens really really tiny uh, but that was a lens that I could not shoot with with my 1DX Mark III it's because there are no adapters possible for it and that's where it opens up for this and also the 0.71 adapter which unfortunately I don't have right now it opens up this camera from a super 35 to a full frame field of view now this is also very important for me and why I also chose this over the C300 Mark III uh, I did at one point consider the C500 but that's just way out of my budget and way too overkill for the work that I do and I thought that you know there's no point uh, but I do enjoy having a full frame field of view uh, some of you might be saying oh super 35 is it's a professional format everybody uses it in the cinema line and yes that is true uh, but coming from the kind of work that I do having that flexibility of having the full frame feel, feel of view uh, is very very important because sometimes you just cannot physically move the space and when you're in a tight you know the time time crunch once again just being able to switch to uh to a full frame field of view really helps a lot and i also have the dummy well not the dummy adapter just a normal adapter from ef to rf which just makes this a lot more versatile over let's say the c300 mark 3 which i'm just locked in into super 35 so, and the last main reason for this camera is i want this camera to be a b cam in the future uh, eventually two years down the road I do plan to buy a properly like a much bigger uh, cinema camera for specific use cases because the kind of work that I do I also transition to bigger uh, bigger kinds of shoots and I do want to have a properly fully rigged out uh, cinema rate maybe like a C500 Mark III or whatever it, whatever the camera comes and I do want a camera that can be a B or even C camera to my main cinema camera that's going to be coming in the future I don't know when uh, and this just fit the bill because you can shoot in c lock 2 3 can really match really well with other uh, canon cinema cameras and it's small so that means is that as a c camera i can even use this as an overhead rig and still have that cinema match uh, matching that cinema look or uh, that kind of quality that i need from a cinema camera and that really is the reason why i got this as well uh, it's just the future aspect of me being able to keep this as a b or c camera whilst maintaining and retaining the kind of quality that i need or that my clients need and also lastly our uh, clients are now pursuing more like 4k content i have being requested to shoot more 4k content uh, and just <laughs> unfortunately the 1dx mark 3 is the only 4k camera that can shoot full frame and that shoots on CF Express cards, which are crazy expensive, uh, a little bit unfeasible to shoot 4K all the time. And just being able to shoot dual SD card slots on this is just so much, so much better, so much more cost efficient, meaning I could have like multiple 64 gig SD cards and run like a full day worth, maybe up to like 500 gigs or more. Uh, but at a lower media cost, uh, cost per dollar at least. And also the fact that I can dual record to these two cards at the same time, which is something that the 1DX Mark III cannot do. It can dual record photos, but it cannot dual record video, which is a shame because I don't really know why it is, uh, but I can do this here. So that's a, one of the reasons why. So lastly, just a really quick one as to why I think certain people might want to choose a video first camera or a cinema camera is really is that we all need to understand something that i preach a lot but not necessarily something that i used to practice was that there is a specific tool for a specific job i do believe that there is no one perfect camera the 1dx3 is amazing but it's not good for everything and however when i was always looking to upgrade to the next camera i was always trying to find a camera that was good for both photos and videos it was one reason why i bought the 1dx3 but when i think about it is that there is never going to be a one camera that is perfect for both for both photos and videos and you need to have different tools that fit the different roles uh, that you play now in like uh, the age of social media and fast turnaround rates you need to be both a photographer and a filmmaker it just gives you a much bigger edge especially when you are freelancing and so really the the c70 came at a good time where the price point was really good i mean it's still expensive but it's a, a good price point where i can afford and at the same time it gives me what i need which is a video centric camera first uh and 
really and that just means that i have a tool that is specifically meant for this there are no compromises uh just to fit that photo aspect so really if it's for people that are looking for a cinema camera really it's because you need to find a tool that fits your job versus a hybrid uh, mirrorless camera these cameras are great uh, however there are certain things that it cannot do like inbuilt ND filters or good uh, audio inputs or just you know solid like time code uh, time code especially when you're mix mixing around with other other cameras having a time code on a bigger set is a huge deal uh, some cameras can't record dual video and things like that so there are many many different situations as to why a video camera or a cinema camera would function much better than a hybrid uh, and that really comes down to what you are looking for i think that's what we we all really need to understand that there is no one perfect camera as much as like the next whatever camera comes out it's like it shoots 8k it shoots 12k whatever it is uh it's going to have some compromises in certain areas and it's not bad it's just that's that's the situation you know you it's just like how you know a carpenter has like a hammer a screwdriver and things it has for different tools same way for photographers and filmmakers a photographer has a camera a photography camera as his tool and a filmmaker has a video camera as his tool and whilst you can match them up just having what having tools that are dedicated for that role uh is actually going to help you a lot versus trying to find something in the middle uh to sort of like you know compromise in certain situations yes uh there are times where that sort of situations does help uh like let's say i'm only shooting alone and i i need to quickly shoot between photos and videos i'll probably take the 1dx3 over this but if i'm shooting video only why would i want to focus on a photo can uh, a photography camera that's going to compromise in some of the video qualities or the video aspects that i need from a video camera like built-in nds for example or if i want to say much better battery life uh, and that's really why where i think a cinema camera or a video centric camera uh, comes into play so yeah uh, i'll be doing a first impressions after i shoot with this a bit more uh set it up a little bit so that i can give you my thoughts and impressions of it uh some some of the things that i don't like and some of the things that i do really really like so stay tuned for that if you have any questions about this camera do let me know i'll be more than happy to address it in the next video so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and sharing this incredible moment with me it's amazing to think that i remember like 10 12 years ago uh just to see that c line you were like whoa my god what the hell uh, there's no way you could afford it but right now i have like a cinema camera in my hands and i can say that i own it uh it's honestly truly truly humbling and an amazing experience to have so yeah uh thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next one